So to learn about my students' hopes and dreams and my family's hopes and dreams, uh, I send out surveys at the beginning of the year, and then also my, I use my first parent conference, the first uh, the first one-on-one -on -one sit down um, with my parents to talk about uh, their hopes and dreams and what what they value for their student and what they want their student to get out of education. And then I take those and I, I use them in their students' uh, education. So if a if a parent were to tell me that their student loves being a doctor, then I would make sure that they get the doctor classroom job. The doctor is the person who hands out the sanitizer in my room. <laughs> um, and so uh, just taking that information, actually using it um, inside your classroom in the smallest way just lets the student know that you value um, what they want out of education. And if you show them that you value it, then they'll value it. Many times at the beginning of the year, families' hopes for their students do revolve more around behavior than academics, but I work to kind of show them the connection between behavior and academics. Um, and then either way, I kind of mesh the goals of the parents and then the ones that the students had, and then my own to kind of morph them into one goal for the students to have um, growth over the school year academically that I'm able to measure through different classroom assessments. The first parent-teacher conference, I'm able to sit down with that parent and talk about their specific goals for their child. And I give them information on your child is three years, four months. Here are the things that we expect of a child when they're between three years and three and a half. We expect them to be able to do A, B, and C. Um, now let's look on this you know, paper I got from the CDC or something, where she's going to be at the end of the year. Those are the things we're going to expect of her at the end of the year. Um, sometimes it's a matter of helping inform them about what might be appropriate for their child. So I say, I know you really want your three-year-old to write her name in upper and then lowercase letters, but that's not actually something we're going to expect until she's five years old. So let's look at a handwriting goal that makes sense and, and decide on one together. And sometimes they've got a really ambitious goal for their child and I say, okay, well, let's go for it. Let's, we don't want to stress them out, but let's see how far we can get. Um, and we say, here, here are the steps. You know, here's where they are right now. Here's where we want them to be at the end of the year. What's the next thing? So let's not look right now at writing their name. Let's look at writing the first letter. You know, we want, right now, She's doing it um, with three strokes. We want her to cross the midline. We want her to you know, work on doing it in two strokes. That's something that you can work on at home. And breaking them down into what are the, each objective or each skill that comes along the way up to that goal and ways parents can work on them at home and ways that we're, show them how we're working on it at school.